youtube live uh, yeah it is there yeah Please nidhi ma'am now, now you can start just yeah. just a minute when you start each day with a grateful heart light illuminates from within each day is a new day which brings with itself new opportunities new challenges new thoughts new strengths and new aspirations and on such a rejuvenating note a very gracious and inclusive welcome to esteemed chief guest professor bhagwati prakash sharma vice chancellor gautam buddh university greater noida professor sp agarwal principal ramanujan college professor pranveer singh director general gniot group of institutions my worthy colleagues from both the institutions and over 350 participants who have joined us today pan india as mother teresa very rightly said i can do things you cannot you can do things i cannot together we can do great things i nidhi mathur on behalf of ramanujan college graciously welcome you all to the inauguration function of the two week online interdisciplinary refresher course on blended learning and flipped classroom jointly organized by teaching learning center ramanujan college and GNIOT Institute of Management Studies Greater Noida The current crisis has called for a change in the ways of teaching and learning the demand is to change the landscape of teaching by incorporating alternative pedagogical techniques one of the plausible ways is blended learning broadly speaking Blended learning is an integration of interactive technology with conventional classroom settings. To put it differently, it is a midpoint between classroom teaching and a complete online learning environment. It gives more flexibility to customize the learning experience for students and motivates them to use multiple learning styles. in a way blended learning facilitates the development of a stronger mental connection in students thereby increasing their learning receptivity taking this as a reference point this interdisciplinary refresher course on blended learning and flipped classroom aims to explore the different ways to implement blended learning and flipped classroom it is important to understand that blended learning is not simply adding technology to the classroom rather it has to be integrated into everyday teaching thereby emphasizing on rethinking the current pedagogical approach the program intends to explore the different models of blended learning and dive into key issues that impact students teachers and institutions of higher education overall the refresher course is an effort to probe into the different limitations which faculties of higher education face and find the alternatives to overcome them by focusing on the fundamentals that have the greatest impact on student learning in a blended or online environment with this i now request professor pranveer singh director general gniot group of institutions to address the audience professor singh former vice chancellor chandigarh university is a visionary trans- transformative dynamic and inspiring leader seasoned academician creative thinker interdisciplinary research facilitator targets achieving strategic planner and policy implementer with 32 years of enriched working experience 
I now request you, sir, to address the audience. Over to you. Thank Nidhi for giving my beautiful introduction and highlighting my contributions. Thanks. Our chief guest of the occasion, Honorable Vice Chancellor, Gautam Buddha University, Professor Bhagavati Prasad Sharma Sarji, Professor S.P. Agrawalji, Director, Teaching Learning Center, and Principal Ramanuja College, New Delhi, distinguished guest, dignitaries, intellectual fraternity, participants of the refresher course, my dear colleague, Dr. Arun, Director Jims, and Dr. Mayank, other faculty members, scholars, students, and the August gathering. Great morning to everyone. It is a great honor to be the part of the inaugural session and a privilege to welcome you all to the two-week online interdisciplinary refresher course on blended learning and flipped classroom that is being organized by our youngest but the highest performing institute, GYMS, in association with Ramanujan College, New Delhi. On behalf of GNIT Group of Institutions, GYMS, and my, my behalf, I extend a very warm welcome to you all. I would like to take this opportunity to introduce the GNIT to you all. The GNIT was established as Engineering and Management Institute in 2001 and become a group of institutions last year, 2020, by the opening of two new institutes. One of them is the GYMS and other is the GYPS. <clears throat> Even when we were passing through the critical phases of COVID-19, it reflects our team spirit, dedication, and strength. Further, we are in the process of setting a few more institutes in pharmaceutical, medical, and legal studies and research. GNIT has always been praised for its excellence in higher education and the teaching learning process since its establishment. Our vision is to be known globally for imparting experiential learning and research at the intersection of disciplines. <clears throat> Our mission is to educate future leaders who build a strong nation and wisely leverage the power of professionalism, interdisciplinary research, and human values. At the GNIT, we share a strong commitment to a diverse community and collaborative organizational culture we believe that leveraging diverse perspectives enriches learning, inspire innovation, and develops strong leaders. The GNIT is gearing to achieve global excellence in education and research by internationalizing our learning ecosystem and the research facilities. We also own the Innovation and Incubation Center established by the Central Government of India. We offer our faculty and student the best possible opportunities to become globally competitive and innovative, which can't be possible without the exchange of innovative ideas, learning and adopting modern pedagogies for facilitating higher in learning and thoughtful discussion in emerging knowledge domains and issues related to the cutting edge of, edges of technology. For meeting the purpose, we are continuously organizing seminars, workshops, conferences, experts, le lecture sessions, refresher courses, and this course is one of them in series. I congratulate Professor Arun and his team for organizing this course. I'm sure that this refresher course must be successful in making learn these high-end pedagogies, blended learning and flipped classroom, related tricks and concerns, practical challenges encountered and the solution adopted. And other pedagogical, pedagogical trends and futuristic developments in the learning system. Hopefully, the experts may also let learn the limitations of these pedagogies to the participants. 
which may provide the platform for the emergence of new pedagogies in the future. It is a matter of pride for me to be here as the topic of the refresher course is very close to my heart. I would like to take this platform as an opportunity to introduce two of the new pedagogies as developed by me and one of the, my associate just three years back, known as lab taken to the class and class taken to the lab. I think I possibly developed these pedagogies as I am always been concerned about the learning to the each of my students. And if any one of them is unable to perform in my subject, then I feel there is some inability within me so that I could not make the student learn the subject and he is failed. The first pedagogy is that lab taken to class is beneficial in facilitating great learning of the circuit branch subjects and similar courses in which Theoretical concepts can be practically applied through software or on any virtual lab platform. And the other one, the class taken to the lab is the good for the other lab based courses of sciences and civil, environmental and mechanical engineering subjects. I also do the research in academics for facilitating better learning, thus developed a new FSBT that is known as flexi, flexi slot based timetable to the level four and subject based innovative skills assessing and evaluation procedures that enforces interdisciplinary learning to the higher ends. I firmly believe if you are a true teacher at the heart or carrying a strong wish to be a good teacher, then definitely you must be having all concerns about extending perfect learning in your class. We teachers are builder of the, our students career, future and the life. If you do even to a few parts of that, then none of your student can forget you through his or her life. I believe that this refresher course shall inspire our young faculty members to be the true teachers that would lead to the dispersal of knowledge and facilitation of high end learning and creativity in the classroom and ultimately the greater benefit to the learners and the teaching fraternity. I express my gratitude to our chief guest, Professor Sarma, for the taking the valuable time from the, the, his busy schedule. I am highly thankful to the Professor S.P. Agrawal, Director TLC and the principal Ramanujan College for associating with us in organizing this refresher course. I'm hopeful that we will be organizing many such courses and other curricular and co-curricular activities in the future. We are grateful to the all subject matter experts who will be delivering the lectures and sharing their subject knowledge and expertise during the various session and making competent to all the participants in these pedagogies. I believe that your expertise will inspire the participants and make them competent enough to become value-added teachers, learning facilitators and the performers, not only in the class, but also beyond the classrooms. I'm proud of the efforts exhibited by gyms in organizing this refresher course I extend my best wishes to the organizers and all the associates of the refresher course. I wish the refresher course a grand success. Thank you, Jai Hind, Jai Ha. One to all. Thank you so much, Professor Singh. Moving forward, Benjamin Franklin very rightly said, tell me and I forget, teach me and I may remember, involve me and I learn. True to this quotation of constantly learning and trying to excel in whatever circumstances arise, Ramanujan College, under the able stewardship of our principal, Professor S. P. Agarwal, has conducted more than 76 online FDPs through its teaching learning center under Pandit Madan Mohan Malviya National Mission on teachers and teaching scheme of Ministry of Education, 
thus imparting training to more than one lakh teachers. Now, I take this immense pleasure to invite Professor S. P. Agarwal, sir, Principal Ramanujan College, to say a few words about this refresher course. Over to you, sir. Thank you, Nidhi. Good morning and welcome to all our dignitaries who are present today in this program, as well as our learned participants who have joined us from all over the country and maybe from outside the country, we really don't know. Uh, friends, uh, well, it's an it's a, uh, honor to be associated with the GNIOT group of institutions. We are always looking for collaborations, as Nidhi said, that association makes things learning easier. So uh, DG already said this thing that association is the key. And when we learn from each other, only then we can deliver better to our students. Uh, our chief guest today, Professor Bhagwati Prakash Sharma ji, uh, Vice Chancellor Gautam Buddha University. I am meeting him for the first time. Thank you, sir, for joining us uh, in this program. Uh, DG Sahab Pranveer Singh, Director General, GNIOT Group of Institutions, Greater Noida, uh, all the colleagues from uh, James and colleague from Ramanujan College. I once again welcome you to this two week refresher course on blended learning and flipped classroom and special welcome to our uh, learned participants who will be uh, you know, with us for next two weeks. And I'm sure that uh, the purpose of the program is served once you go through this program. Well, first of all about the college, uh, see the Ramanujan College is a Delhi University maintained 100% funded uh, UGC institution. And it's pretty new institution. Uh, we we uh, uh, came into existence in 2012 only, but still we offer, we are an A grade institution uh, from uh, NAC and uh, we have a ranking of uh, 60 NIRF All India. And uh, we offer about 15 honors undergraduate courses. The underlying thing is undergraduate courses, two BVOC courses, 10 add-on courses. And uh, we, our students are very active. We have 25 societies, clubs. We have signed 20 MOUs with the industry and other educational institutions, two with foreign universities. Uh, one is with Western University of Australia and uh, another one with uh, a management school in Austria. We have a state of art building, which you can see in the background. Uh, we have most modern equipped labs. We are setting up artificial intelligence and machine learning labs. We are also developing our own private cloud very shortly in next three months, it will be operational. And we have six research centers. Uh, uh, your DG was uh, uh, telling about ethics and values. We have Center for Ethics and Values and also School of Happiness where we offer a add-on course. Uh, we have filed one patent in the area of blockchain technology. We have one journal in UGC care list. Well, what I believe is that if undergraduate education is strong, only then the other institutions can flourish, research can flourish, teaching can flourish, uh, you know, and other things can come to a better situation. Also, my firm belief is that if we can strengthen our undergraduate education, our rankings in the world will definitely improve. You can see uh, why, where we are suffering, but if undergraduate education is strengthened and the way new education policy has addressed the issue, we don't know its actual implementation. If it is done in the proper perspective, I'm sure the country's progress will be much, much higher in terms of education. And we can again become wish guru as we used to be in, in terms of education in the world. Another important aspect uh, today, which I will touch up the Pandit Madan Mohan Malvi National Mission for Teachers and Teaching. See, this is a mission to train teachers. And let me tell you, the Ramanujan College has taken up this mission and we are the pioneers in this mission. We have uh, left behind the central universities, major big universities, IITs even. 
we have already trained 100,000 teachers, which is a achievement and a, a ministry knows it very well. So this is a skill which we have acquired over the period. We have our own EDX portal, which can handle thousands and thousands of teachers at a time, which is a perfect thing of blended learning. We do all assessment assignment online, which is a challenge for bigger universities like Delhi University and other universities, because in this pandemic, we could teach online, but how to assess the student, that is the challenge. We could not develop MCQ uh, type uh, assessment or uh, the assignment type assessment online. And that is why we have to do the open book exam, which is again, not a perfect way to assess the students. So what I'm trying to say is that friends, we have to pull our socks in order to make it a uh, proper blended learning and assignment and assessment is the key. So that, 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 that we will address in this issue, uh, in this, if we can, uh, you know, develop it further. It is a golden opportunity for our teachers to learn the tools of teaching pedagogy and research. Well, friends, we, this is not only a blended situation, but what we have done in various programs, as Nidhi said, in 76 programs, we have concentrated on ICT, MOOCs, research, and subject-based teaching pedagogies. So this is a key in, in, in any teacher's career because we do not have any formal, uh, uh, you know, programs of learning how to teach. Well, we are doing research, of course we are doing research, but that does not teach you how to handle the classroom. That is the key. And ministry knows it. That is why this mission was taken up earlier. Universities were doing some kind of training programs, but they were also not, uh, uh, you know, proper in the sense that they were just for our promotions, not for actual teaching and learning. Friends, uh, you know, uh, 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 your DG must be knowing that Harvard University uh, president once said, knowledge is currency in 25th, 21st century. And friends, we can only progress through this system. The knowledge means the research and innovation. Uh, during the pandemic, see, we were initially when lockdown happened, do you think we were prepared for this pandemic? No, not at all. But over the period, we have adjusted ourselves. We have learned so many techniques. We have developed new things. And learning, teaching and learning has uh, achieved a special stage. Our teachers has been trained. We all know this technology now, but we have to blend this technology with our classroom teaching because there is nothing like classroom teaching. We cannot say that this will, uh, this will solve our problem. Of course, uh, this can uh, make sure that our students from each corner, if we have the technology, our students uh, of, of uh, open learning, our students of IGNU can be exposed to the best of the teaching learning through this mode, because a best professor can record and everybody will benefit. So we have those kind of facilities. Any one of you are invited to our studio. You can do your record. You can launch your course on MOOCs. We, we are open to this. So friends, we are always ready to collaborate and innovate and do teaching, learning, research uh, jointly. So that is, that is the key which we always look forward. Another important aspect which I will touch upon today is that friends, we have to be very expressive. There are concept of communication, concept of uh, uh, you know, collaboration, concept of creativity, concept of collective working. So these things need to be strengthened in order to improve the teaching learning, like, uh, uh, you know, DG said, interdisciplinarity, multidisciplinarity. How can we achieve that? We work in exclusivity. This is not going to help. We need to collaborate and work together in order to help the community in order to help our young minds. Friends, sometimes we feel that as a teacher, I have done my job if I have taken my class. Do you think it is enough? Your DG just said. I need to know what I have communicated. My student must respond what, what I have done, whether they have understood, whether they are ready to 
uh, express what I have expressed. So I'm a facilitator. I need to know this and I need to be an expert facilitator. So that is very, very important to sharpen our ideas. Another important thing to young uh, teachers who have joined us that you must grow through, through our national education policy 2020. And let us see how as a teacher, we can contribute in the implementation of that policy. I may tell you this institution has already prepared. We are ready. Delhi University is ready with the structure of the program, four-year program. We have already experienced that, but somehow that failed. But uh, let us see in the new program, if everything goes well, the university will definitely take a lead in, 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 uh, in uh, education, in teaching, research, and ICT tools. So friends, with this, once again, uh, welcome. And uh, we are keen to be associated with various institutions and we are keen to disseminate knowledge, whatever we have, uh, uh, disseminate the tools, the, the uh, you know, technology to anyone in the country. Thank you very much. Uh, over to Nidhi. Thank you so much, sir. It's always a pleasure to listen to you. <clears throat> Moving ahead with the next segment of our inauguration. Today, we are indeed very privileged to have with us Professor Bhagwati Prakash Sharma, our esteemed chief guest. Professor Sharma is the Vice Chancellor of Gautam Buddha University, Greater Noida, Uttar Pradesh. Having over 39 years of teaching experience, he has participated in various ministerial meetings of the WTO at Mexico, Hong Kong, and Nairobi. He has been awarded the Mahamana Madan Mohan Malviya Award for 2016 for contribution in the field of management. Achievers Award 2016 for best contribution in management sector by Computer Society of India in their All India Convention. And the list goes endless. Having delivered various extension le lectures abroad, Professor Sharma has authored 14 books, more than 250 articles and research papers in journals, newspapers, and magazines, and organized 32 workshops and national as well as international seminars. We welcome you, sir. I now request you to address the audience. Over to you, sir. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Honorable Director General of the GNIOT, uh, Professor Pranveer Singh, uh, esteemed Professor S.P. Agrawal, Mayankji, and all the uh, Dean's Directors, uh, um, Delegates, and uh, other guests. It gives me immense pleasure to deliver this today's lecture in a uh, broad cross-section of faculty members from across the country. Actually, indeed, the conscience of any educational institution is teacher. I always consider or treat teachers as the conscience of an educational institution, whether it is a university or it is a college or it is a school. In a school, certainly it would be the staff. And good, one good teacher is, or a good teacher is one who can motivate the students to read more. That is, if I have taught for an hour, then at least I should sensitize or I should develop an academic addiction in the student that the, he or she reads for four to six additional hours uh, in his or her own time after getting sensitized from the class uh, classroom teaching. So uh, it is the duty of the uh, faculty member to inspire the student in such a way that uh, he develops an academic addiction in that subject or on that topic. Another most important thing which uh, we should bear in mind is that uh, no doubt uh, today we are talking of blended uh, learning and uh, flipped classroom. Uh, at the same time, there are many pedagogical interventions and uh, we should keep in mind that uh, blended learning or in hybrid learning, uh, when we are teaching online, 
we should not confine ourselves to just loading the same old text, uh, text material on the virtual platforms but we have to plan our content uh, accordingly uh, we have to uh, use those kinds of uh, small video films we have to use uh, to facilitate problem based learning project based learnings now when we are going for problem based learning say in a flip classroom or in a rotation model if we divide the students into small groups then every group has to be assigned a problem and if we have to assign problem throughout the semester or throughout the year to 8 to 10 groups in a class and then at least we need 500 to 1000 problem statements and therefore it becomes a onerous uh, task to prepare problem statements to facilitate problem based learning in a flipped classroom model and therefore uh, it's easy said than done because uh, when we are adopting uh, the blended learning model and we are adopting a flipped classroom model then in that case uh, the teacher's responsibility increases manifold so that should also be borne in mind so when you are joining this uh, fdp you should bear in mind that within this fortnight you should be able to equip yourself with all the teaching learning approaches and all the tools whether problem statements or project statements uh, so that after returning back and uh, resuming your duties uh, you can well uh, uh, deploy all these uh, teaching learning approaches which you would be learning here at the outset i would like to make it clear and as uh, uh, professor professor sp agrawal and uh, the director general has highlighted the importance of uh, quality and innovativeness uh, indeed when we see today the Uh, india is having the third largest educational network and uh, in spite of that we are uh, we do stand 48th in global innovations index and therefore whether it is blended learning or whether it is we are using the flip classroom model we have to motivate and sensitize the students in such a way that they develop a temptation for Uh, innovativeness uh, just uh, at the outset i would also like to mention that why india is ranked so low in uh, global innovations index is uh, when we compare the number of patents being applied by chinese scholars and indian scholars we find a vast difference uh, china uh, chinese scholars apply Uh, for more than 15 lakh patents every year while indian scholars apply for less than 50000 patents every year international patents so their share is uh, almost 43 or 46% our share is just 1.6% and therefore while teaching we have to sensitize our students whether we uh, are teaching in the uh, online mode or we are teaching in the physical setup but uh, this is our duty how to sensitize the students for innovativeness and uh, for that uh, the problem based learning and project based learning which facilitates uh, uh, critical thinking so only with this uh, element of critical thinking a student should be able to uh, um, i think uh, uh, or acquire uh, temptation to apply for intellectual property registration even at this stage uh, what do i want to uh, convey is that uh, just often we have a phobia of patenting our knowledge almost uh, there are 124 patents for tea kettle chai ki ketli mein kya hai uske 124 patent duniya bhar mein hai so why can't we go for a 20 uh, 125th patent for that so one thing we should keep in mind that we have to sensitize our students in uh, online teaching as well as in the physical setup that the students should uh, always think of something innovative and for that something innovative 
we have to use the problem based uh, learning uh, pedagogies and particularly say for example even when i i am teaching uh, i can ask that all right if uh, uh, i am teaching computer science then i can ask uh, my students that uh, the uh, uh, the district administration at gautam buddha nagar has to devise a photo identification system by which they can locate criminals moving on bikes on the roads can you develop a photo identification software of that kind if i assign this problem or project to the students then this would help them in developing a critical uh, thinking and finding solution to various problems or i can assign the problem say for example if a particular company here say ibm is having uh, almost uh, 1.5 lakh software developers if i ask my students while teaching human resource management hr uh, when i often talk to my counterparts who teach uh, human resource management and when i ask that uh, have you been mastering the techniques of uh, machine learning based predictive analysis they say what is the use of uh, machine learning uh, for us machine learning it's for computer science people but no when you have to predict the attrition rate at what rate the employees or software developers would be leaving ibm which people are likely to desert the company first so for that you have to apply uh, this machine learning based predictive analysis technique and therefore uh, when we are uh, uh, using problem based teaching method pedagogy or project based teaching pedagogy then we have to assign such problems to the student groups and uh, uh, as we talk of uh, rotational technique or rotational model in uh, blended learning so we have to uh, rotate uh, the students for different kind of problems so what do i feel uh, often when we talk of uh, Uh, pedagogy we normally confine ourselves to the term pedagogy well there are more than two dozen such teaching learning approaches pedagogy means facilitating child learning then there are andragogical interventions or andragogies which facilitates adult learning then there are hutagogical approaches which facilitates self directed learning then there are pedagogy approaches uh, which facilitate peer to peer learning so now in a flip classroom when whatever traditionally a teacher used to teach is normally uh, given to the student either in the form of some uh, video recorded lecture or in the form of some powerpoint presentation or in the form of some uh, material to be downloaded by the students giving them some links so ultimately whatever uh, content was used to be taught earlier a decade back nowadays it is expected that all those contents are transmitted to the student and it is expected that the student should come after reading all these and internalizing that information he comes well equipped in the class and in the class uh, whatever the students in those days uh, had done at home those kind of projects and those kind of problem solving are uh, assigned to be solved in the classroom and this involves uh, the students in a better manner actually when we do teach the students we find four kinds of students there are some avoidant students avoidant student like in physical classroom setting when we see that if there are 60 students there are some students when a teacher is teaching they keep on gazing at their teacher continuously but the moment teacher uh, uh just has throws his uh, eye on those students they just uh, uh, either ditter away or they just uh, uh, down their eyes why because uh, they have this apprehension the teacher may ask something so we have to convert the avoidant students into participative students and we have to convert participative students into collaborative students by adopting flip classroom technique that is if a student shall come well prepared and shall be well equipped with the knowledge that is required uh, or uh, uh, on that topic if he already has that vision and that knowledge 
then he would become participative and he would rather collaborate with the teacher in uh, discussing very various problems or in arriving at solutions and therefore we have to use a flipped classroom to convert every student who is an avoidant student into a participative and convert participative student into a collaborative student so simply just adopting flip classroom or blended technique in a theoretical manner or in a mechanical manner is not enough whenever we are using blended uh, learning uh, pedagogies we have to keep in mind that the take home for the student is much more than normal teaching because take home is very important unless i engage the students take home would be very uh, poor sometimes uh, a person may deliver a very good seamless lecture and the students may feel amazed but say if after an hour somebody asked what has he delivered that was a very good lecture but i cannot reproduce i do not remember then it is of no use unless you can ingrain whatever you have taught taught in the mind of the student in such a way that he takes it home and retains it so take home facilitating more and more take home through blended learning and through uh, flip classroom is most important so by using this uh, uh, approach of uh, blended learning as well as in using the flip classroom you should keep in mind the objective that every day i should enhance the take home part in my lecture so the students uh, take home more and more content and therefore i have to plan uh, my, my teaching learning in such a way that uh, the take home is uh, uh, much more than what it used to be earlier particularly since uh, this is the inaugural and i won't be going in the into the much of the uh, uh, depth of the uh, mo models of uh, blended learning but i would like to highlight the four major problem which we do experience in our educational institutions and uh, every teacher should keep in mind uh, one i have already uh, pointed out and that is of uh, a problem of uh, quality and innovativeness when we compare the quality and innovativeness in our teaching learning uh, vis a vis international uh, benchmarks then we find that we are gradually uh, lagging behind and therefore we have to sensitize our students that uh, they should uh, have a temptation for uh, innovativeness for example just uh, uh, though we say we are having a very vast educational network we are having a double plus category of institutions is uh, accredited by the nec but uh, after 1930 no scientist in india could get a nobel prize for his or her research in india after c v raman i was uh, going through the nobel tally of various universities i found an israeli university among top 10 universities which have secured maximum number of nobel prizes after 2000 so a country having just uh, an area of 24000 square kilometer and a few uh, uh, universities somewhere around in double digit only while our universities and degree awarding institutes are in um, exceeding 1000 so when we compare so even we could not produce a single nobel laureate for his or her research in india in last 70 years or uh, rather 90 years after c v raman but israel a country is a so tiny country one of its university is among the top 10 universities which uh, whose alumni have secured maximum number of nobel prizes after 2000 and therefore we have to sensitize our students that they uh, um uh, have a temptation for innovativeness so quality and innovativeness is the first uh, requirement another thing uh, for which we have to sensitize the students is that 
our uh, education is getting more and more distant from our national ethos and uh, orienting the education with national ethos is again equally important uh, and the third lacuna which i do uh, observe is uh, our education is getting more and more, more disorientated oriented from our heritage and fourth is we are not able to ingrain ethics and values in the conduct and behavior of these passing out students that is very important we have been teaching uh, professional ethics and human values or we have been teaching indian ethos in management and ethics and we are uh, almost every stream we have in every stream we are having uh, some uh, paper or subject on ethics but actually the student who is securing almost 80% uh, marks in the paper on ethics he doesn't mind in flouting those ethics whenever it is uh, required in his life uh, immediately after joining anywhere in the job so unless we can ingrain the ethics and values in the conduct and behavior of the students in such a way that he pursues them throughout his or her life and therefore uh, whether it is the flipped classroom or it is blended learning we need those kind of moral stories in our contents we need those kind of uh, games maybe indoor games maybe outdoor games or uh, we have to assign those kind of uh, problems or problem statements in uh, problem based learning so actually uh, we have to focus or we have to uh, just uh, stress upon these four requirements in all our pedagogical interventions and therefore in this regard uh, in our uh, flipped classroom also we have to think of transformational pedagogies the transformational pedagogies actually transform the value system of the student so unless his value system is transformed unless he uh, uh, develops a strong temptation to pursue the ethics and values in his conduct and behavior so that kind of transformation is necessary so whatever uh, method we have been using that is uh, say in flip classroom we give some video clips we have to give those video clips which can ingrain ethics and values in his conduct and behavior this uh, i'll take one uh, very uh, uh, you can say example a very interesting example how uh, a, a small event can uh, change a person's psychology everybody knows as i have talked of nobel prize alfred nobel was a good uh, poet in his childhood then he did his uh, masters in chemistry and he invented so many things including the dynamite we all know and he was having almost 3 and more than 350 patents to his credit sare 300 patent uske naam pe the and uh, including the bofors gun manufacturing company he was owner of 80 ordnance factories hathiyaron ke 80 karkhano ka malik tha jisme bofors bhi thi and uh, he was a very rich person and uh, uh, since he had invented the dynamite and many other uh, arms and ammunition and uh, he was earning a uh, lot of money from across the world one day uh, he had a brother ludwin ludwin novel so he died in the hospital by mistake the media got a wrong information uh, and instead somebody passed on the information that alfred novel has died so the media next day all the newspapers printed merchant of death in the lap of death maut ka saudagar maut ki gaut and when this news was <laughs> printed in the front page of all the newspapers and when alfred nobel read this item he was frightened that i am such a rich person i am a scientist renowned scientist having more than 350 patents to my credit i am having so much wealth and people think like that so this frightened him and ultimately he donated all his wealth and uh, created a foundation and from the interest of that money today nobel prize has the uh, most commendable wealth so this has brought a turning point in the life of alfred nobel likewise we have to sensitize every one of our student by such uh, moral stories 
by such games by such problem statements uh, then only i think we would be able to instill right kind of values among the students uh, that is very important now in this regard uh, you all are young teachers uh, and uh, uh, what do i feel that uh, today uh, the university in the university your uh, educational institution ranking Uh, whether it is qs ranking or times higher education ranking india sometimes figure in top 200 sometimes among top 300 sometimes even we do not figure anywhere among top 300 institutes uh, as i have said there are universities in the world like howard somebody referred has more than 160 nobel laureates uh, to its credit its alumni and uh, scholars and uh, there are more than 75 universities which have uh, nobel laureates in double digit so uh, today when we do see that uh, our uh, students have to be sensitized so in ranking the first criteria is uh, intellectual property registrations ipr registrations second criteria is international publication now in international publications uh if uh, uh, we uh, see the score of publications of indian scholars is increasing but their citation frequency is very poor 70% of the research papers of indian scholars are not cited for next 5 years so they do not have a single citation uh, even after 5 years uh, of publication of a research paper so we have to sensitize our students we have to sensitize our scholars we have to sensitize our faculty members that at least they produce uh, or they write or they author such uh, research papers which are worth citation by other subsequent scholars in this regard uh, these days many people have been indulging in gimmicks uh, very recently our education minister higher education our education minister has uh, awarded a uh, professor for highest citation frequency but when it was some people investigated it was found that most of his citations were self citations ya to khud nahi apne paper ko ek paper ke dusre paper mein citation de diya ya aapas mein doston ne uska citation kar diya and uh, this so we have to avoid all these things so how can we uh, uh, sensitize our students that they have this kind of academic integrity so that is also very important uh, to inculcate academic integrity among the students among the scholars in our teaching so uh, no doubt blended learning is going to stay even today we are having this uh, uh, conference online and the technology has facilitated this and therefore we can have online teaching as well as teaching in the physical classroom and physical classroom teaching is actually very important i would be mentioning an example or a, an experiment of a japanese physicist uh, masaru emoto masaru emoto as uh, that how thought waves influence a person in india uh, in everywhere uh, actually so he took water in a petri dish the two people were conversing they were talking to each other he removed this petri dish degrade then to 22 degree centigrade he conducted various experiments with the and converted that water into ice cube and that ice cube was placed under a dark microscope connected with the uh, uh, camera and he uh, conducted the photography of the crystallization in that ice cube so there were some positive conversation of uh, gratefulness uh, affection was going on uh, some very uh, good shapes of crystallization uh, were observed like ashtadal kamal uh, or hexagon octagon or oval shape starfish like that and whenever some negative conversation was going on uh, some very haphazard crystallization has taken place and uh, it means the thought waves or the electromagnetic field that is generated when we are delivering a lecture it also influences the audience uh, in that uh, physical setup and therefore while teaching we should also uh, in the blended learning 
when we would be uh, moving between the two modes physical mode as well as online mode and while in the online mode uh, unless uh, i have hectic thinking in my mind uh, it won't be having that telepathic impact sometimes you may have observed while teaching or while delivering a lecture that uh, when you have developed some uh, uh, topic uh, for delivering a lecture at the time when you are delivering a lecture a hectic thought process goes on uh, in your mind and therefore uh, when the electrical impulses or electric circuits which are being created in the among the neurons of the brain it creates a lot of electromagnetic field all around you and therefore your uh, uh, teaching is very effective and uh, everything uh, uh, gets internalized in your mind and say after delivering eight or 10 lectures when you just uh, deliver a lecture mechanically without much uh, thought process going on in your brain then you will see that uh, it doesn't have that much impact so simply uttering words is not enough what kind of thought process is transpiring in your mind that is very important and uh, therefore uh, you have to in the blended classroom uh we have to keep this thing in mind and uh, in the blended classroom i would like to mention one more thing that in blended classroom we have to uh, indulge in rotation it this rotation nowadays in the national education policy we have talked of interdisciplinary researches or interdisciplinary studies nowadays everywhere multiple disciplines are being involved for example i was reading that uh, uh, now people are working on a software based on artificial intelligence uh, algorithms that is brain to audible speech uh, brain to audible speech means now neurophysicians have developed the technology uh, how to interpret the um, uh, electrical impulses of the brain neurons of the brain and electrical and electronic engineering people have developed chips or sensors which can read the electrical impulses that are going on in the uh, among the neurons of the brain then uh, they are tra transmitted to for big to a computer for big data analysis and uh, through machine learning and ultimately through uh, the mechanical device based on electricity and uh, magnetism it is converted into voice so say for example if a patient of a stroke lakwe ka patient hai he cannot speak but now neurophysicians have developed a technology uh, on the basis of which they can interpret the electrical impulses and therefore one can learn ki he wants to drink water after that uh, the sensors ki, uh, uh, read those impulses they are subjected to big data analysis and machine learning and then they are converted into voice and an eighth pass uh, attendant would be there and uh, it would be converted into voice ke usko pani peena hai so when this type so i think in the blended classroom when we have to rotate among various stations we also have to rotate uh, this teaching among people of different streams or of uh, uh, different disciplines so uh, whether it is in doctoral researches or a, it is in teaching when we are talking of multidisciplinary approaches so we have to rotate so that a person uh, develops an interdisciplinary approach interdisciplinary approach is very important particularly these days some people when uh, i talk to some people who are from humanities linguistics उनसे कहते हैं कि आर्टिफिशियल इंटेलिजेंस पे आपको भी पढ़ना चाहिए दे व्हाट इज फन ऑफ रीडिंग बट दीज डेज पीपल आर अप्लाइंग एआई टेक्निक्स इन डेसिफरिंग द ओल्ड स्क्रिप्ट्स सम पीपल आर वर्किंग टू फाइंड सिमिलीज इंटर से तमिल ब्राह्मी स्क्रिप्ट इंडस स्क्रिप्ट and सर्टन इपिग्राफिकल स्क्रिप्ट ऑफ लैटिन अमेरिका एंड देन दे आर ट्राइंग टू फाइंड दिमिलीज Uh, among these three uh, scripts and therefore uh, nowadays uh, we have to in our blended uh, teaching we have to do such rotation that the students are sensitized towards interdisciplinary approach i'll be just finishing with one more example of interdisciplinary approach and we have to uh, sensitize the student for example we have put uh, barbed fence 
on the Bangladesh border. Bangladesh border उन्हें कांटेदार तार की बाढ़ लगा दी. Still, there are lot of uh, infiltrations. Now, Israel has developed a very good technique. They have developed a robot uh, called Guardian. That Guardian can run in the desert at a velocity of 50 kilometers per hour. Now, this robot is linked to some sensors. Those sensors are installed across the border. Whenever any trespasser approaches the border within 50 meters uh, distance, that uh, sensor takes the cognizance, and that sensor is linked to a computer, and that computer has a photo recognition system uh, and a photo bank. So, if some trespasser is uh, their security personnel, like uh, we have border security force, like uh, their border guards, if uh, some border guard is passing from the border so that uh, sensor would not be taking cognizance because it is linked to a photo identification system and ultimately if any aligned trespasser is uh, passing through the border then that uh, sensor would be uh, taking notice of uh, that stranger passing through the border and the signal would be transmitted uh, to that guardian and that guardian would start running from there at a velocity of 50 kilometers and and therefore in blended teaching what we have to do we have to do rotation to expose a student with all these different uh, streams or disciplines whether it is for humanities how to they, they can use the algorithms whether it is for uh, healthcare or medicine and uh, therefore Uh, simply in blended teaching, we should not confine our role. Kiti ke aadha humne online padha diya, aadha classroom me padha diya. No, we have to keep in mind the purpose of uh, uh, sensitizing a student for interdisciplinary intellect, for most advanced uh, knowledge and information, and uh, what kind of knowledge is being created across the world. That uh, also we have to sensitize the student. so whether it is in flip classroom also we have to give that kind of advanced uh, projects to the students and unless we give very advanced futuristic projects to the students uh, we won't be able to sensitize the students for example otherwise uh, we are way, for example uh, already the government of india has announced that after 2030 no fossil fuel based car shall be allowed uh, to be sold when the, the uh, petrol and diesel driven vehicles would not be manufactured there are more than 80 to 90000 companies from coimbatore to uh, gurgaon which have been manufacturing various engine components because a petrol engine or a diesel engine has 2000 parts and all these 2000 parts were whether for a bike or a scooter or for the car or truck or tractor for everywhere they, they have to be and the various companies are manufacturing those parts but now when we would be moving towards the electric vehicle so uh, all these 2000 parts of engine diesel engine as well as of petrol engine vehicle would not be required to be manufactured all that manufacturing would become redundant and uh, we have to we shall have to manufacture uh, electric drive and still in india we have not been able to develop the technology for manufacture of electric drive so we either will have to import it from us from tesla or from china or from south korea and there are only 20 components in the electric drive to jo 2000 part wale engine ko banane ki zarurat nahi repair ki zarurat nahi that electric drive requires minimum of uh, this uh, repair maintenance and therefore one should keep in mind so we have to in our flip classroom we have to sensitize the students to work on futuristic problems that is again very important and particularly even uh, our we have not been uh, endeavoring to sensitize the students to right choice of technology the, because that question is also related for example if we go for uh, battery driven vehicles as we are doing lithium battery india doesn't have the deposits of lithium or uh, cobalt which would be required to manufacture the lithium batteries from where shall we be procuring china has already captured monopoly of uh, natural reserves of, of entire africa and latin america with respect to cobalt and lithium and say when the lithium battery would go out of order uh, it would be a pollution menace why should not we go for sodium ion battery 
and why should not we go for uh, this uh, hydrogen fuel cell technology because in hydrogen fuel cell technology we can uh, refill the hydrogen within 5 to 6 minutes while in case of the lithium battery charging would require 68 hours charging time in hydrogen and oxygen we produce only water as by product and otherwise uh, no battery would be required in the hydrogen fuel cell technology india has done very uh, breakthrough so i think uh, uh, we have in our uh, blended learning and fair, uh, um, this uh, flip classroom it should not be confined to delivering the conventional contents but we have to sensitize the students to the emerging problems the new technologies and we have to sensitize them that uh, and we have to assign such problems in flip classroom that they come up with the futuristic solutions for futuristic problems so simply using blended teaching and learning and simply using flip classroom is not enough unless we sensitize the students to the requirements of uh, uh, country as well as the mankind uh, for uh, the futuristic technology development so this is what i wanted to convey uh, i think i may have taken 5 to 6 minutes more uh, i uh, compliment the organizers for uh, choosing such a very live subject for this uh, fdp and uh, all the uh, faculty members who have joined this program i would be expecting that every one of them uh, develops his expertise in blended learning as well as in flip classroom and particularly in flip classroom a student a teacher should be equipped with minimum 1000 problem statements with minimum 1000 project statements and uh, a lot else which uh, i have conveyed and we have to sensitize the students to our uh, national heritage we have to sensitize the students to our national ethos also because uh, for example uh, in heritage uh, these days we say in the uh, cosmos brahmand mein there are more than 2 trillion galaxies each galaxy has 400 to 500 billion stars 400 to 500 arab tare hain ek aakash ganga mein aisi do kharab se 20 kharab se zyada aakash ganga hain and the space the intergalactic space uh, has a dark energy now uh when scientists say that uh, three fourth is dark energy and in the one fourth the entire cosmos uh, physical entities are there sare grah nakshatra ye sab ek chauthai mein hai teen chauthai so uh, and that is why the uh, cosmos is, is expanding we have in our vedic literature uh, several uh, such uh, shlokas for example tripadurt udet purukh uh, there are five six such shlokas which say that uh, is uh, anant brahmand mein uh, ek us anant brahm ka ek paad mein ye sara achar achar jagat hai aur uska teen paad yani 3/4 is anant antariksh mein adrash hokar vilin hai that is the 3/4 is uh, dark energy like uh, within inter intergalactic space there is dark matter that has also been described so well and uh, we have to uh, inter integrate this lastly i just quote an example of indian heritage of uh, these days out of 1000 heart patients 272 have to be installed with pacemaker pacemaker lagana padega pacemaker kuch nahi it is a battery of lithium or uh, silver ion battery and uh, from that battery electro an electrode is inserted in the pericardium of the heart uh, uh, and uh, electrical impulses are given in the anterior part of the heart that is in the atrium uh, ventricle sorry uh, given in the vent uh, ventricle uh, in our ayurveda there is a uh, shloka which says agni gum radhe nashani gum radhe agran pashu pashu padin krishna so which also says i bear electricity in the anterior portion of my heart तो हृदय के अग्र में विद्युत धारण करने का जो विवेचन यजुर्वेद में आता है वही बात आज हम पेसमेकर लगाते हैं और पेसमेकर भी कुछ नहीं है लिथियम है सिल्वर आयन बैटरी है पच्चीस तीस ग्राम की उस बैटरी से एक इलेक्ट्रोड हार्ट के इंटीरियर पोर्शन में इसमें वेंट्रिकल में इलेक्ट्रिसिटी की सप्लाई दी जाती है तो कहने का मतलब है वी हैव टू इंटीग्रेट अवर एजुकेशन तो मैं अगर ह्यूमन फिजियोलॉजी पढ़ा रहा हूं 
जैसा अभी आपके डायरेक्टर जनरल साहब ने भी कहा मेडिकल और फार्मेसी की एजुकेशन भी ऐड करेंगे तो मैं जब ह्यूमन फिजियोलॉजी पढ़ा रहा हूँ और मैं जिस समय पेसमेकर की बात करता हूँ तो मुझे ये भी बताना होगा कि हमारे एंशियंट हेरिटेज में क्या था हार्ट से रिलेटेड मैं तो आई वॉज मच एस्ट फॉर दर्स्ट टाइम इन सिक्सटीन ट्वेंटी एट विलियम हार्वे फाउंड आउट की रोल ऑफ हार्ट इज टू सर्कुलेट ब्लड इन दॉडी दिस वन फंक्शन बात उसके बाद हार्ट के सारे फंक्शन का पता लगाया ट्वेंटी एथ सेंचुरी में इन इंडियन स्क्रिप्टर्स इन दिरूक्त फोर थाउजेंड ईयर्स बैक वी मैं हृदय शब्द ही बना है हृदय हरते ददाते रहते यम हृदय शब्द मीन्स लेता है ब्लड को देता है शरीर में रक्त को घुमाता है और धड़कनों का नियमन करता है Today, modern science says brain has no role in uh, regulating the heartbeat, and uh, there also yamam harte uh, dadate raite yamam. So yamam means dharkono ka niyaman karta hai. So my kaha ka matlab ye hai ki in flip classroom we also have to assign the students uh, such uh, problems of uh, integrating the modern knowledge with our ancient wisdom uh, and civilizational antiquities. so uh, sorry if i again took 5 minutes more so thank you and i congratulate and compliment everyone thanks a lot ji thank you so much sir for such an in insightful and a thought provoking session uh, moving ahead uh, there are a few rules uh, which need to be carefully adhered to by each participant of this respect, uh, of this refresher course I will be spelling out these rules one by one, so all the participants are requested to please take a note of the same. The first rule is that all the quizzes and at least ninety percent of the assignments should be submitted to avail the program completion certificate. The average score of all the quizzes must be at least forty percent. Rule number two: at the end of every session, participants will have to fill up the online feedback form. which is compulsory as per ministry of education guidelines rule number 3 it is compulsory for all the participants to attend all the sessions in order to receive a certificate of participation and the last and the most important rule of all as the refresher course is being organized under the prestigious pandit madan mohan malviya national mission on teachers and teaching scheme we at tlc ramanujan give prime importance to willing and serious participants who are eager to learn so in this con context it should be noted that e certificates will be awarded to only those participants who fulfill the above criteria uh, moving uh, ahead to the last phase of our inauguration session i now request professor mayank pande to propose the vote of thanks over to you professor mayank uh, thank you professor nidhi for giving me this opportunity uh, so here i start chief guest of the day honorable professor bhagwati prakash sharma ji professor pranveer singh ji professor sp agrawal ji and our very own dr arun kumar singh ladies and gentlemen i feel honored and privileged to have been asked to propose a vote of thanks on this occasion once a great man whisper the essence of all beautiful art is gratitude on this note today on behalf of gniot institute of management studies greater noida and teaching learning center ramanujan college university of delhi and on my own behalf take this opportunity to put all my gratitude into words and extend heartiest vote of thanks to all the dignitary guest for gracing this inaugural function of two week online interdisciplinary refresher course on blended learning and flipped classroom i would like to express our sincere thanks and deep sense of appreciation to our chief guest professor bhagwati prakash sharma ji vice chancellor gautam buddha university greater noida for his interesting and meaningful address we all are enlightened with your knowledge and presence as always i thank you sir for being there with us sir we are also amazed with the knowledge you shared with us relating to the importance of blended learning and flipped classroom in the present time and uh, connecting the same with the uh, ancient era we always enjoy 
the way you describe the concept of you know problem based learning and new pedagogical techniques how it is to be used in india and how it is being used all over the world sir you are rightly pointed out different styles of learning ranging from classroom teaching to the self learning thank you sir for uh, highlighting all the important facts of blended learning and flipped classroom we ensure you uh, that in coming time uh, we will work on your all the suggestions thank you sir we also uh, we are also grateful to uh, professor pranveer singh director general gniot group of institutions for his thought provoking address sir has encouraged us to use modern pedagogy to ensure outcome based learning sir has emphasized on association and collaboration as basis of academic development sir we are sure that we will make best use of this association with teaching learning center ramanujan college university of delhi definitely sir we are in a better position than the academician in the past and we must take advantage of the same thank you sir i also like to extend our sincere thanks to professor sp agrawal ji director tlc ramanujan college uh, and principal ramanujan college university of delhi we are grateful for his guidance and support professor agrawal sir highlighted the importance of blended pedagogy for teaching and learning and flipping the traditional teaching pedagogies as sir said that being teacher we also need to think that how we are going to contribute in the implementation of new education policy i'm sure that we as a teacher are also preparing in the same direction to implement new education policy in near future professor agrawal is playing instrumental role in the developing right teaching resource to meet future challenges through organizing you know orientation programs refresher courses fdps and short term courses under the aegis of uh, madan mohan malviya mission thank you sir i would like to take this opportunity to express our sincere thanks to dr arun kumar singh director gims i would like to mention here that the way sir has guided us to plan such a course through which maximum teaching fraternity may be benefited and to be ready to accept challenge in the era of industry 4.0 thank you sir for your continuous guidance and motivation i would also like to express my sincere gratitude to our management chairman mr rajesh gupta ji and vice chairman mr gaurav gupta ji along with the young and dynamic ceo mr swadesh singh for their unconditional support to organize such events and to be associated with such institutions dear all an event like this cannot happen overnight and we'll start rolling weeks ahead and it requires planning and we are fortunate to have with us a team of very motivated and dedicated colleagues from gniot institute of management studies and ramanujan college who understand their job and definitely they are result oriented i'm happy to express vote of thanks to organizing team from gims greater noida dr shalini sharma dr ruchi rai professor pradeep verma and dr sumit nagpal dr nikhil rajput dr bebhas kumar and dr bipin rathi from ramanujan college for their support a very special thanks goes to our fellow colleague and coordinator of this event this refresher course uh, ms nidhi mathur for remarkable coordination to make it happen thank you madam finally i would like to uh, thank all the participants who have turned up in such a great number from the refresher course not only from delhi and cr but also from different part of the country i would like to mention here uh, till now we have 357 participants from uh, across the country thank you so much for showing interest and trust we thank you from the bottom of my heart for your cooperation and patience thank you once again to all for being there with this we come to 
the end of the session thank you all thank you for being there thank you so much professor pandey for the vote of thanks before we sign off i would just like to inform the participants that the contents for day 1 that is today have been uploaded on the uh, portal of blended learning so you are requested to start perusing through the contents and start attempting the quizzes assignments and etc so with this uh, we come to the uh, conclusion of this uh, inauguration function of the two week online interdisciplinary refresher course and uh, we look forward to having such association with the uh, gniot in the future as well and for the participants you are requested to monitor the telegram group uh, regularly because certain updates regarding certain sessions will be definitely put up on the group itself so thank you so much for your time and uh, take care bye bye